Hello listeners and welcome back to La Cancha and the drama was ever present in La Liga this weekend. And oh my god, my heart is still in place. I'm joined with Oscar. And we're going to try to dive in into the magic, dramatic, weird world that we had in La Liga this week. Because the weekend the weekend fixtures were crazy, but what happened midweek was added to the drama. And first we have to start with Valencia and they took on Espanol. <laughs> I'm joking. Yeah, I'm yeah, joking. We, have to, we have to because we've lost a team in La Liga, sadly. And that's Espanol. And it What's sad like, about that? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, we're, we're gonna we're gonna respect them it's, historically you don't you don't no you don't them when they're down. yeah it's not, it's not but that's the best time to kick people because they can't get back at you <laughs> yeah, yeah. When, when you when you're not having those four points next season or, or six points you, you would realize it's true Granada coming back down <laughs> okay yeah anyway. Yeah, but, but things were looking good for Espanyol going into this fixture. They had that win against Rayo Vallecano in midweek. Atletico Madrid gave up three goals for Espanyol to equalize. And they, they had the momentum going into this game. But in the first half, I don't think we saw a great Espanyol. I feel Valencia were far, by far the better team. And mm-hmm. they created the more chances. They, there was a time in the first half where Valencia had seven shots to zero Espanyol. But when Montes scored, I think that sort of changed the dynamic of the game because... Valencia scored before with um, Diego Lopez, but Montes equalized. And soon after the second half, Espanyol scored another one with Braithwaite. And they should have had a third, if I'm being honest. I feel they were a bit robbed with Montes' third goal. Mm-hmm. And um, that there was no foul on Mamadash, really, but it's just um, the refs making a poor decision again. And this time, I, I, I say Valencia really benefited from it because Samuel Lino went on to score a late goal that pretty much puts Espanyol in the second division for next season and gives Valencia so much life in terms of fighting for survival. Yeah, it was, it was really crazy down there. Because, um, like you said, the goal literally came against the run of play. And, you know, Valencia, they, to their faults this season, when they get setbacks like this, they don't enjoy cope well with them. And it you know, took late drama and... If you're an Espanyol fan, you have every right to feel hard done by it. Like I, I know I would if I was in this position. Then again, I wouldn't be in this position. So. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm sorry, I, I'm sorry, I, I'm sorry, I can't be objective. But hey, isn't it more fun when I, not objective? Yeah, yeah but, but it's um, you know, on a serious note, after saying all this, might sound weird, but I actually wanted Espanyol to win this game. Now, Taj, wait. <laughs> don't, 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 don't come for me with the axe yet. Because it will have made things interesting. You have had two relegation six-pointers on the same day. And me, I I love chaos. <laughs> so yeah. That would have been fun. But it is kind of, in a way, sad to see a yeah. historic team. And four to six points every season go like that. <laughs> <laughs> You know something? People always talk about like, oh, like, shouldn't you want this league to be more competitive? But like, if you're in a competitive, or we should have a competitive relegation battle, it's all well and good when you're not part of it. But when you're part of it, so you're not part of it, you don't like it. It's very stressful. Uh, But I'll say with Espanol, like, if I'm an Espanol director or I'm an Espanol fan, there's two things that go into my head. First of all, why is our defense so bad? Why couldn't we solve this goalkeeping situation for so long? Because ever since Pacheco came in, they have improved. And throughout the beginning of the season, I go back even to this reverse fixture at the RCD Stadium, a goalkeeping mistake cost them because I, I forget who the goalkeeper was at that point, but his doesn't mistake, matter. <laughs> his mistake. Yeah, they're, they're both as bad as each other. Yeah, yeah. And um and if you're looking at it, then if they had those two points, this would have been not as Dramatic results, and if they had won this game, they would have like, been like, safe and Valencia would have been in trouble. But football is about the reality not the possibilities. And the second point I want to make regarding Espanol is that the referees have somewhat screwed them throughout this week because, even if you go back to the first game of the game, there are images that the bar images weren't the correct ones in terms of Griezmann's second goal. We're not sure whether it went over the line or not. and 
it just makes the league look very bad not having goal line technology. I know the league's arguments is that goal line technology only applies to certain freak scenarios, but if those freak scenarios are literally putting a team in the second division or the same title race, we have to have And the second one is the Montez goal. I feel Montez did nothing wrong for the second goal, and it should have been valid. Yeah, it's kind of unlucky. Yeah, it's been really unlucky on this for else part, I can't lie. So, yeah. uh, I mean, even that aside, like, you only have yourself to blame if you're disappointing directors because you had, you signed two goalkeepers that can't catch a cold. <laughs> you, know, you took till January to get, to partially solve the, like, honestly, I feel like we said with Espanol, this all started in the summer when, they were banking on a huge offer coming for the Thomas and you know the the funds didn't come they end up selling him for absolutely not small a trinket of his value and if they sold him for a good amount instead of maybe pushing for 70 million because not a lot of teams have that money these days yeah because a lot of teams were willing to pay like atletico madrid real madrid sevilla were really interested in Raul de Thomas, and they were willing to pay 25 to 30 million and to see the fact that like he was denied that move and he moved to right for seven million for for peanuts, it's it's a shame. I feel I feel it's a shame for the player, and we'll get to him later. And it's a shame for the club that we've missed such a brilliant player in in the league so far, and he's only starting to get back his form. Mm-hmm. Uh, for, we'll talk more on Valencia, but I want to go to other teams that were in the relegation battles, uh, starting with Catafe and Catafe. It's, it's a miracle for them because they scored late on to beat us as soon as they started losing this game. Nice fun. Uh, thank you. Thank you. My, with my grandpa puns. And for those who are listening in on podcast, it's I, I said Ketafe makes it matter because Jaime Mata came up with a goal that is going to be so vital in keeping Ketafe up. Uh, he scored in the 90th minute and in the game, they started losing after Chinyabla scored, but Latasa equalized and Mata scored the winner here. And it sets us up for a very, very feisty last day showdown between Hetafe and Vardalade. And that's that's what we've been discussing for the past two, three weeks, that this is the showdown that could decide uh, a lot of things in the rele- in this relegation battle. And um, Vardalade, they drew 0-0 zero, zero at Almeria, but are, are we ready to dive into the calculators and bring calculators out and what each team needs in this relegation battle? And I also want to bring in Salta Vigo to the picture because Cadiz beat them by one goal to zero, and Celta, they've been a sinking ship. Where do we start at? Yeah, I'm going to repeat what I said last week and the week before that. I think Celta are going to be fine. <laughs> <laughs> I'm joking. They're, they're in trouble now. Like, yeah, how yeah. They... I hope they've not had the mindset I've had about them. Otherwise, they're done for. <laughs> yeah, because the thing, though, with Celta Vigo, and there's something that we kept on, I think we kept on bringing on in this podcast with a lot of teams that were mid-table, and most of those teams ended up surviving anyways, is that the table sometimes deceives in terms of where you are in terms of the in terms of the table, like if you're 11th or 12th, you might seem like you have a comfortable lead, but if you're five or six points away with two or three or four bad games, you're right in the mix, and mm-hmm. Celta, they've had about 10 bad games since um, they last won. And now they're right into it. And Cadet, like, oh, credits to them. They got the job done at home. Yeah. Yeah, the goal. Okay. Sorry, I was going to say the goal Cadet scored was really good. Well, the assist anyway for Escalante. <laughs> like, it just shows you, like, Cadets have players that just become 10 times better when their survival is at stake. Yeah, and, and I'll, I'll give credit to. Cadiz and to Vidalid in that even though Vidalid they might go down what you can't say is that those teams their sporting directors didn't go for it because mm-hmm. Vidalid they brought in Kyle Lahren, they brought in Amala they brought in a bunch of really good players Cadiz um, they they brought in some good signings in Roger and um, in Ramos and also the team has improved so much so you have to give mm-hmm. credit to, to them and but it's it's a tough one because there are six teams that we've just discussed, five spots. I'm sorry, I'm um, one spot. I'm trying to avoid one spot. Yeah. And the and permutations it, are so crazy. Mm-hmm. 
Yeah, we were on the group chat. We were all trying to figure out, okay, who was going to help and what does each team need? Yeah. And we're still not sure. Yeah, we're still not sure. I'll say the thing is, um, every team, each of those six teams depend on themselves for survival. In that if they get a the win, they'll each be of fine. them will survive. They'll be fine. But then it gets complicated if, like, for example, we can start with um, Kadith because they're the furthest off. If they beat Elche, it's, or they get a draw against Elche, but we all know what Elche is like these days. They're, yeah. they're mathematically safe. And there's nothing about it. But if they do lose to Elche and Valencia avoids defeat, Amaria um, avoids defeat or they win, they, they beat Espanyol. Celta Vigo beats Barcelona, which might be a tough ask or an easy ask, depending on which team Barcelona plays. And Valladolid beats beat Tatafe, then Cadiz could, could go down. For Valladolid, they just have to win. They just have to win. There's no two mm, ways about it. There's no substitutes. Yeah, for Atafi. What if Valladolid draw? What's their head to head with Celta like? That's something we could find out. So. I think they lost to Salta in the last time they played each other. So that, that can make things a bit complicated for them. But okay, they lost 3 0 to Salta. Okay, Salta. so unless they beat Salta 3 0 in the reverse fixture, they need to win. What? They beat Salta 4 1. Damn. Okay, okay, okay. Okay, this is very interesting. But the thing is, okay. they might have a better head head with Almeria because Almeria, they, they, don't, they don't win away from home. So. Uh, oh, yeah, okay. Let's discuss this. Let's discuss this scenario of River Delhi and Celta. I'm really interested in it. So, yeah. say River Delhi draw, Celta lose. Right? Yeah. They're both on 40 points. The next tiebreaker is head to head, like. It's goal, goal different. Di- goal, goal different. Head to, oh, for after head to head goal difference and head to head goals scored, goal right? Scored. Yeah. Yeah. So, and Celta. It's the same. Yeah, so what's, the, what's the difference between head to head goal difference and head to head goal scored? So head to head head to head goal difference is um no I, I think the next tiebreaker is just head to, is just goal difference so it starts with head to head which is the games that they played against each other and they both scored four goals against each other so I think the next one is oh yeah next one is goal difference next one is goal difference. and Salta like the thing with Vardalid is they've been thrashed so many times that <laughs> the goal difference is <laughs> yeah is, that's, that's yeah. looking at looking at the numbers it's, it's Salta have this one so yeah, yeah they need to win. <laughs> Yeah, but it does start to get complicated. Unless, and, yeah, unless Barcelona cashing on all the goals, they on all the one nils and thoroughly <laughs> yeah. trash sale. No, even then that might not be enough. No, and even Barcelona would want to like maybe they would want to get rid of Celta, who has been their bogey team for for much of the year. Sure, there's um, motivation there. Yeah, but I want to discuss the Celta situation because I, I was looking at the comp- post match comments from Iago Aspas, and he's like, this team lacked. He said this team lacked quality in August, it lacked quality in January, and now is saying that the team lacks quality at this moment. That's a tremendous stick to the sporting director, Luis Campos, who's been highly rated, but it seems like this season he hasn't done as well as people expected him to be because he was the architect that was meant to reform the Celta team, that was meant to make them a team that could fight for European positions. But I think it's also it's the same story with Salta because everyone thinks that they have the players to do it. But year after year, they keep on hovering around the relegation zone. I think mm-hmm. They might be the most overrated team in the league. Yeah, I mean, it's it's weird because at a point like I'm just looking at their form, right? They went unbeaten for one, two, three, four, five, six, seven games, right? Yeah, and after that. They win one in one, one in six, one in eight, in actually. Yeah, oh, one in eight, yeah, that's true. <laughs> yeah, you're, you're being kind to them, yeah. It's just, it's just weird, and I guess actually, in, actually it's in, even worse than that. It's uh, because no, I'm not including I, those draws because those draws are part of their unbeaten streaks, and just true. I'm actually being kind to, kind yeah. to them, yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, but like. I know Aspas has been injured recently, but like again, that still comes down to the problem of over dependence on Aspas. And I thought, okay, it's weird because Gabriel Vega has actually stepped up to try and fill that void of you know a certain striker they used to have, but he did certain things. We won't talk about that too much, but um, you know, 
it's funny how their probably going to go down and they've practically slept slept walk into this because you guys know I've been saying for it, Celta will be fine. They keep showing that they're not going to be fine anytime soon. And yeah, they have the hardest task next week out of everyone, to be honest. If Bas- that is if Barcelona are on their game. Yeah. If Barcelona do what they did against Real Valladolid, then I think Celta will be fine because what they did against Real Valladolid is was just <laughs> shameful. <laughs> is that yeah. like yeah. They want, I mean, well done, Barcelona. They did what they wanted to do in getting rid of Espanyol. <laughs> yeah, if, even though, but actually, you know what? Barcelona kept the relegation race interesting because River Madrid would have been relegated if yeah. they didn't win that game. Like been relegated. So, so, yeah, we wouldn't have had, we wouldn't be talking about this conversation right now. So, well done, Barcelona. <laughs> you did something. Yeah. <laughs> I, just, I was just yeah, thinking yeah, about I mean, stuff like, because I was like, yeah, it didn't really matter about Espanyol. No. <laughs> it just screwed over the rest of the teams. It, yeah. and, uh, it, even just to add like more gravitas to your points, if we go back to match day 32, Celta, they have an eight-point gap over Espanyol and Hetafe in the, in the bottom three. Mm-hmm. If we go back to match day 31, which is the last time that they won, Celta, they have the same thing, an eight-point gap over Catafe, an 11-point gap over Espanyol. And at that point, we're, we're all thinking, okay, this team is safe. So it's just, it's just crazy what happened. Maybe it's a mental exhaustion. I think the Valencia defeat was very damaging for them. And um, also, the defeat, also the tie against Girona was somewhat damaging because if they had won that game, they, they would have been safe at the moment. But... They're still here. They're still in the fight for relegation, and it's going to be important. Another team that I, I think somewhat sleepwalk, or the comments of their manager seems like they might sleepwalk into this, is Almeria. Because Ruby last week, after the victory over Mallorca, was saying that he thinks with my 39 and 40 points, Almeria is going to be saved because there are lots of like head to head battles in relegation zone, and doesn't think any team will be able to get, like most teams will be able to get over that 39 or 40 points barrier. And now <laughs> <laughs> they might go down with 40 points, even with 41 points, Amir might go down. So I'm not really be regretting those comments. Yeah, well, it's like, you just have to ask, what was he cooking? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because those comments are bitch like sour milk, man. And I guess part of it is because some of the relegation teams just got wins out of nowhere. Because yeah. certain teams like Betis and Barcelona, and I think at not really Athletic Club, their case is different, but Betis and Barcelona decided, you know, let's make the rest of the table interesting. We've already achieved our goals or almost yeah. achieved our, our goals anyway. So let's just make things interesting. Yeah, even Rayo too, like the, the loss against Espanol is a bit surprising given the fact that Rayo usually do well against Espanol. Mm-hmm. But I'll probably... They do well against Catalan teams. Yeah, they do yeah. against Catalan teams. The the one worry for Almeria is they're the worst away team in the league and they have to go to Espanol away from home. Ruby has to go to his former club. And there's this drama between Ruby and Espanol. And what happened is that Ruby, when it was at Espanol, he got them to seventh place. And they the fans were celebrating, everyone loved them. But then the season after he sort of snaked them and went to Real Betis. And Espanol got relegated, so I'm sure Espanol fans would be wanting pressure in their team, not only to give them a win in the final day to say goodbye to La Liga for for now, but also to take Ruby down with them. Yeah, that would be, that, I guess that would be motivation. I think teams in the league are pettier than you think. So. <laughs> <laughs> Extreme, they can be, every team in the league can be extremely petty for one reason or another. Like, like I said, Barcelona, Gave up three goals against Real Valladolid just because they want Espanyol to go down. Like they they sacrificed their stake against Rec. Javi even took off their stake <laughs> because it's like Real Valladolid need more help. Yeah, yeah. So, when, when, when he did that, I, I was so livid because I, mean, I was so angry I, for for I'm I'm, for different reasons though. But yeah, yeah, I've been saying for weeks that 
the reason why I think Valencia would stay up is because Vidal would have a much terrible fixture list than we do. And that one I sort of like recorded as, okay, this is a Barcelona out. Uh, this is a Barcelona win and Vidal out. And after Valencia did impossible and managed to beat uh, Real Madrid. And lost to Mallorca. Uh, lost to Mallorca. But and my, Mallorca did what they... Mallorca, they're the only team this in the midweek games that actually showed up that didn't have anything to play for. So you have mm-hmm. to give them credit there. Mm-hmm. Although it's it's sad that it was against us. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, at least Kangin didn't score. He only assisted. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. But but for for Valencia though, like Valencia, they every, there were comments after the game that Valencia is safe and everything, and that's again going into that. To the next that's game. dangerous, man. That that's lethal. <laughs> yeah. It, it it is very lethal because. Valencia could still very much go down, although it would take it would take things miraculous things to happen. Uh, first of all, I, I would to... really say miraculous too, because I mean, yeah. let's look at it like this: Espanol, yeah. everything that could have, I believe, if a, a, the drop could have been enough for Espanol if Etafi didn't win, if um, Cadiz didn't yeah. win, but yeah, so every I and mean, it could it could easily happen. Next. I just for the fact that you can imagine. Or you yeah. can visualize a team being 18 means they, they they cannot afford to relax or rest on their laurels anyway. Like, yeah, you know. yeah, th- that is true. But the one thing for Valencia though is they need Cadiz to win or to tie, because Cadiz being in the picture and having that six points head to head difference or six points gets a six points over Valencia makes it so complicated for Valencia. Yeah. And, and then if Atafi. I believe that if Atafi also lose, Valencia lose, and Cadiz, you know, lose, yeah. then it becomes a three-way mini league of yeah. the three of them. And if it's but about Amari their results. Amari also need to not lose. Celta also need to not lose. So a lot of things need to happen. But like, like you said, if you can imagine it, then... You I even imagine you can. It's is is very visualizable. Yeah, you can yeah, actually yeah. explain how. Wait, can yeah. Almeria be involved in this trip? Okay, if Almeria yeah. involved in this four way, we didn't talk about that scenario. Yeah, yeah. If if Almeria is like the thing is the two teams that Valencia have a much weaker head to head with in this relegation battle is Almeria and Cadiz. So. For Valencia to stay up, they need Almeria and Cadiz not to have 41 points by the end of match day 38. Unless things get complicated. If Almeria and Cadiz have 41 points, Valencia needs to have more than 41 points. Yeah, even if um, if all four have 41 points, I guess Valencia has to be bottom of the... Yeah. Um, because yeah. Almeria... Unless Celta... Because... Yeah, because um, I was saying, I was thinking like Valencia are going to be below Petafi no matter what, and yeah. I'm just thinking whether Almeria will be ahead of Valencia or below. Either way, yeah. But I guess the important thing is that it's in everyone's hands. Like if yeah, you win, is. you're fine. You don't have to worry about anything else. Yeah, and and even going like I'd rather not Valencia going to that game against Betis thinking a tie will be enough because if you think a tie will be enough. I think our think that, yeah, that that's will a tie be enough for Valence? Yeah, a tie will be enough. A tie, a tie, a tie be enough, but yeah. yeah, you shouldn't go in with the mindset. Yeah, because and plus, it's it's better since it's Joaquin's last game. I mean, for me personally, I hope Joaquin scores so Valence yeah. better score. So. <laughs> yeah, well, Joaquin can score in the other net. He should be ready for his former team. <laughs> <laughs> we, we can all every, we, 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 Valencia and Betis players can go hand in hand and say that's just walking. If you know that meme, you know that <laughs> meme. <laughs> oh, wow. But but that that's the relegation zone for you, like battle for you. Honestly, I've never in my life lived something like this where six teams can be relegated <laughs> on the final day. And all of them depend on themselves. It's going to be a wild one, and everyone's going to have the calculators out and um, doing the different permutations. Yeah. But as we've said before, it's very. Similar. What time is it next Sunday? Uh, unless Lali. Okay, goes. same same time. I I mean yeah, I hope they time. don't because. But I I have a feeling they won't though. I have a feeling they won't. 
because that's what they like to do. Okay, they, they, they can change Villarreal. We'll talk about those teams like that. They can change yeah. a couple of teams. Yeah, they, they can change it. I think they could. I, I think that I think they might. The, the most they'll do is change Villarreal, Atleti, and Sevilla Real Sociedad. Every other yes. game, is, every other so, game is riding on Conference League or relegation. So La Liga have published the time of um, the final day. So so far, no change. Um, it looks like all the relegation battle games will be at nine on Spanish time, which is three Central. Eastern time, which should be two for you, Oscar, and mm-hmm. um, twelve for our brothers in the in the West Coast. Uh, while the other games where nothing is riding on it will be at six thirty Central European time, which is twelve thirty for Central Eastern time in North America, and um, eleven thirty for you, and eight thirty for our boys mm-hmm. in the West Coast. So, yeah, or nine thirty. Well, yeah, yeah. Anyway, so. Not, not- that's a topic for next week. <laughs> yeah. So uh, let's move on from this uh, intense relegation battle and go into the battle for Europe where a lot of teams are celebrating, which includes Real Sociedad. And they lost possibly the best loss in their in their history or in this season because it means that they are going to be in the Champions League next season after what happened in the other game with Rai Rai Kano and Villarreal. And... I, I think they deserve it. I'm really happy. Yeah, they, they deserve it. Um, you know, they did their best at times to not have it. But, you know, uh, congratulations to them. Congratulations to Emmanuel. Because everyone was like, um, you know, losing Sadiq so early in the season when he clearly looked like he was going to score a lot of goals. Yeah. You know, they really recovered from that. Not having a fully fit or a foul ball, you know, really... Im- a lot of the players really stepped up and raised their game to another level this season. Yeah. So yeah, they deserved it, and I don't think they've dropped out of the top four since. I I'd be surprised if they dropped out of the top four by October, just temporarily. But they've been there a really long time, and you know you have to give them a lot of credit and praise. Yeah, it seems like um they've been there since uh, yeah since October. You'd be right, mm-hmm. which is since. Effectively, since match day 10, they've been in the top four. So, And you have to say they, they do deserve it. And I'll say they've, they've gotten the points that mostly top four teams in La Liga get at the moment. So 68 points, I think that's in the past, it's on average, has been enough to qualify for the Champions League. And you're right, given the fact that they've had that injury to Sadiq, given the fact that they've had much a lot of accumulated injuries, I, I feel that's something that you can give credit to Mano. And I, I must confess something. When they made all the signings they made in the summer, I was a bit scared for them because I was like, are they really going to qualify for the Europa League again? And they've done one better and they've qualified for the Champions League. So it's um, you have to give credit to Imano, to the players, to Alabe, the sporting director, and building this team. But as we've discussed many times in this podcast, they really need a good right back, a good left back, and a fit setting to to take things to the next level in the league and um, next season they're going to be playing Champions League which is a different level of demand in the squad am I sure that they're ready for it I don't think so but I think they have to prove it and um, it's been nice uh, uh, to see them play football and see how they've done it so far this season yeah you know, a big shout out to someone like Takekubo who's really really starting to fulfill his potential you know, and he's turned me from a hater into a fan unless he goes to Real Madrid in the summer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Back on the hit trade, right? There's a risk he might go to Napoli um, because they're interested in paying his cause, apparently. But yeah. I, I, from what that, is this point, I think he wants to... Yeah, from what is yeah, this he point, should, he should stay. stay. Like, he's found, yeah. he's found his home. You know, you can tell, like, he's really, like, the fact that he takes off his shirt in a bus derby like you can tell he really loves the club and he's really into it so i you'd you'd like to see like this core of players be in the champions league next year to enjoy what they worked so hard for yeah and what if they get on like kamada <laughs> we'll get the japanese uh doing real sociedad but well, honestly i love that like teams need to start taking more risks in terms of who they appoint and who they buy because it, it just keeps things interesting you know 
Yeah, and speaking of Takikubo, he, he gave an, sorry to cut you off, he gave an interesting interview um, to a Spanish newspaper. I don't know whether it's Marco or Ask, but he said that he knew that this adventure at Ralph's so that he had to really do well because he was on the edge of being described as a failure because he hadn't done too many things in Villarreal. In Mallorca, it was good, but he wasn't shining as well as he did. And I'm happy when a, when a player realizes that maybe he's not as good as the hype and he has to prove himself and he does work hard. And that shows a lot about his character and that's something that's been a good success story. And maybe it's Emmanuel bringing the best out of him too. Yeah. He realized he wasn't him. <laughs> yeah, he yeah, did, he did. Yeah. And, he, and he became him. I think yeah. that's, that's the thing, yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. And a word on Atletico, they, they won this game. They're, they're third at the moment. They After the tie to Espanyol, Griezmann's still scoring. He's the best player possibly in the league at the moment. Anything else? And um, Navarro Molina, you know, he's continuing yeah. to do really well. Like, he's just kind of like he had a terrible start to life in Atleti, but he's really come re- good at the end and he's locked down the right back position. You know, that was a problem for them after the season where they won the league. So good for him. Yeah. Yeah, and Trippier left, and Trippier might face Atletico Madrid next season in Champions League, so that will be interesting if that happens. Mm-hmm. Uh, but now we're going to move on to Vallecas. Irael has said goodbye to Vallecas. He's not going to renew his contract. He's had offers from different clubs in Spain, different clubs in England, and he said goodbye by beating Villarreal. Uh, Villarreal, they've said goodbye to the Champions League pretty much with that, with this loss, and it's. I, I'm going to make this all about Raiola because his impact on Spanish football has been incredible, not only in Rio, but what he did with Mirandes uh, three years ago, getting them to Copa del Rey semifinals, beating Sevilla, Villarreal, and um, and Celta Vigo on the way there. And then he comes to Rio, he gets them to the semifinal with Copa del Rey, he gets them to La Liga. I think bef- before he got them to, he gets them to La Liga, he, he does really well with them. They're a team that you would expect them to be in this battle to survive, but every season they always finish comfortably since he's been there. So he's he's a tremendous manager, and I, I hope for the best that he can stay in La Liga. And um, yeah, I, I, I can't say any more words of praise for Raula. Like there were times last season, I would wake up at 8 a.m. just to watch his team play. That shows how much. I enjoyed watching Rayo and um, hopefully they get a good manager that's that can replace the Rayo lot because it's nice to have a good Rayo. But it will be sad to if Rayo leaves Spain. Yeah, he's really someone that's brought a lot of life to Spanish football in his own way. And I hope, I mean, I hope more, there are more coaches like him. I hope he stays at the La Liga club. I don't really see which one he'd stay at now unless. Yeah. Villarreal decide to part with <laughs> Setien, but don't they, doesn't he have a long contract? Uh, with Setien, I'm not sure. I think it might be one of those like six months, 18 months contract. Yeah, if it's like an eight months, maybe he goes to Villarreal, but I think that there's no, there's not like necessary, of, unless he goes back to Athletic, I think that would be cool. Yeah, there's, we can, we, we're going to speak, there's also Sevilla who might be interested in him. Mm-hmm. But given how well Mendilibar has done, it's it's a bit of a risk, right? Because you can say, okay, Mendilibar is there just as the fire extinguisher and maybe contacts were already started with Raiola. Then you have Mendilibar in, in a Europa League final. But mm-hmm. I, I can see maybe Raiola possibly going to Athletic, uh, given what's going on with Ernesto Valverde there. He hasn't, they started very well, but let's be honest, since the World Cup break, it's it's been frankly frankly a disaster for Athletic given how they've done and the ambitions they had to finish in Europe and mm-hmm. there's also Villarreal there although I think Setien has done a good job like better than a lot of people think I also feel maybe Setien is part of an older generation and if Villarreal wants to be a team that's doing well in Europe that's competing well in Europe or I, I think maybe Irala might be the manager because he's more attuned with the new brand of football that's growing in European football mm-hmm. and maybe he's a better choice than Setien, I'll say. Yeah. I agree. The old guys need to go. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah. I can, well, if I'm talking about that more next week, but yeah, you're all uh, 
I mean, the only thing for me is, why is he leaving before we get to beat him? Like, it's not fair. <laughs> it's not fair, man. Like, this guy is going to be on beat against Barcelona in his career. Anyway, anyway. Um, I mean, know, if, like... if, it means, if it means we finally get rid of Ryu. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you're scared rid of all the good teams. Like, you, you I, 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 I mean, how to get rid? How to get rid of Cadiz too? So it's not like I'm biased for beautiful football. <laughs> I'm just biased against the anti Barcelona teams. Oh yeah, I mean, Ryan, I mean, like you said, they gave him a really good birthday. Um, I say birthday send off present. You know, with lovely goals from Detamas and EC. The yeah. turn from Comensania for the. Second goal was, I don't want to say it's Berbatov as well. It was a really good turn. Yeah. And as for Raya, I think as long as they have Raul de Tomas being comfortable in his surroundings, that they'll still be fine next season because yeah. he's really, like in the last few weeks, he's come, he, he's not a very stranger. He's gotten his confidence back. He's scoring against um, Real Madrid too. So. It's, yeah, and his goal against Real Madrid was like that. That was a typical strike. Yeah, that, that was a really hard strike. Like Courtois, I could Courtois have done better, maybe, but like the pure power and accuracy of that strike was typical of the Thomas. You know, he even has the, in my opinion, the stupid stinginess back. That just shows that his confidence and all. So <laughs> it's a good thing for Ryu. Yeah, it really is. And for Villarreal, we're going to talk with Taps next week about their, their season and whether it's been and give grace to all these La Liga teams. But has, has their season been a success or a failure? Well, given the fact that Emery left, which honestly sucks in my opinion, I feel like if he was there, they'd have won the conference league easily. Yeah. They upgraded to Europa League. So maybe it's a success, but then. I don't. I yeah. We, I I think we, if three of us put our heads together, we can give you a proper answer. True, because I'll nice say thing. like, if we grade on a curve, I'll I'll give them or I'll give Setien a being a success because he's come into a club where they like the way things were done with Unai Emery, and he's somewhat changed the style and he's done really well without Gerard Moreno, and also when you look at the fact that they lost a lot of quality in, in the summer, in the winter, with Dan Juma, with um, Re leaving, and it was a bit of a chaos, chaotic situation for him. But mm-hmm. the other things is that the way they got out of the Conference League was a bit disappointing. There's losses to teams like, I think they he was there when they lost to El- Satya was there when they lost to Elche, yeah. lost to Rayo, home and away. Like those are results that if you, if you add them, those wins together, that's they're competing or they're in the Champions League positions right now. So, yeah, it's it, it's a bit hard, but you're right. If we put our heads together, we can grade this better. Um, speaking of four, of like teams in Europe, for our betters, they're going to be in the Europa League next season, and they did that by beating Girona or Iglesias. You you went against him. He came back and scored. Uh, he silenced his critics. Yeah, yeah. That's uh, this is a tactical <laughs> But I mean, okay, Borja, I'm sorry for comparing to Rafa Mir. That was that was out of line. No, I'm not even. Rafa Mir also scored this weekend, so he's still trash. Right? <laughs> <laughs> watch him score! Watch him score a hat trick in the Europa League right now. <laughs> yeah, but um, yeah, but you know, surprisingly, I looked at the goal scoring stats, and Borja has 15 goals. Wow. I think this is more than he had last season, right? Yeah, 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 I think so. Yeah, it, it's more than he had last season. And I actually think he's played worse this season. So I, <laughs> I don't know what that says. <laughs> anyway, um, you know, but two really important goals to ensure um, Europa League football. Even though if they lost, like, they are still going to get Europa League football, in my opinion, because the rest of the yeah. teams below them are doing whatever. But, um, <laughs> yeah, um, it's really um, good for Borja to get the goals too. I also think like it, this season is still sort of a success. It's still a success for Betis, like getting Europa League three times in a row. It's just, you know, you just feel like there's room to grow and like Chris said that up until this scene, they're not taking those extra steps because 
it went out of the Europa League round of 16. The, yeah. A round of 16, round of 32. Okay, they even get round of 16, so yeah. And they didn't challenge properly for the Champions League. The only good thing, I guess, is they didn't get a red card. Yeah, the other good thing is they didn't get a red card in this game. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, their um, record for red cards is filthy. Yeah, to say at least. But, you know, in my opinion, this win was not necessary because the other things below them are doing are so far away and Girona, you know, needed this win more. Yeah, so, but, but at a point it looked like when, when this game started, it looked like they needed to win because they don't have that head to head with Osasuna and um, they were losing to... Uh, so they were losing to Girona at first, and Osuna were winning against Hetafe, but it's going to go all the way to the final day for those Conference League positions. And if 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 not, can I move on to Athletic so we can talk about them as a group? Uh, I, I you guys might be familiar with the car run for YouTube YouTube viewers, but it's Elche continues to be party poopers, and Elche again they were party poopers for Athletic. They beat them. Elche they keep on taking points <laughs> when they're already dead. <laughs> And you wonder what they're going to do with those points. But I guess playing for professional pride and confidence for next season. He's but now that's been... man. He's, it is. He it is, is wicked. What? Wait, 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 wait. I just thought of something. Cad is getting relegated at LJ's hand. It's going to be so unfair. <laughs> and I'm saying this as someone who hates Cad is because... The fiasco of the two points of the like offside that helped is, I mean, again, that's just wickedness. What are, what have they done with that goal? <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, Caddy should officially be safe now by all rights. Yeah, so that's why if they go down, the chaos is going to be crazy. Yeah, so, it's going to be crazy. Yeah, but let, let's talk about this um battle for conference league because it's, it's very complicated. We've spoken about the battle for survival. <laughs> And now there are six teams trying to avoid one position. In this Battleford Conference League, there are five teams trying to get one position, all separated by one point. Athletic Club, also sooner they're the front runners, but sooner they're right now they're seventh place. Uh Girona, right. Super Super Scorch. Yeah. I, I was like Silver Scorch. Silver Scorch score is still having the table on goal difference. Yeah. That's stupid, yeah. boy. Yeah, Osasuna. Osasuna have to play Jiren on the final day of the season, so that's going to be interesting. Yeah, yeah, that's going to be a playoff. Yeah, because they, they won their playoff against uh, Athletic Club, so they have head to head for sure over them. And <laughs> I mean, they're like uh, we're, we're the kings of the Basque country or Pamplona now. <laughs> yeah, and it's Sevilla. I'm, I'm not sure how well they're going to do because they're going to either be in a, on an emotional high. From the Europa League or down with Spar from the Europa League, so I think they're possibly going to lose to Real Sociedad regardless of what happens. Uh, I think it it has to be in that game where it's going to be decided because I don't see Athletic Club beating Real Madrid at the Bernabeu. Um, Rayo going to Mallorca. I think Mallorca is going to win there, but Osasuna versus Girona. That's, it's going to be it's going to be. Tasty. Yeah, Mallorca doesn't have anything to play for now, though. So. Yeah. They, they don't have anything to play for, but I feel it's always... And that's why I'm somewhat worried for Valencia going to Betis. is always tricky going to a team in their final home game, even if they have nothing to play for. Hmm. And, but, well, it, it can be tricky, if you're right. And I guess with Valencia's case, Betis is in a different league to Valencia, yeah. so it's even harder playing against them any time. Yeah. But, yeah. Yeah, and who do you think is going to make it in this uh, battle number uh, seven? I don't know. I mean, uh, okay, looking at it, I think Real Madrid will want to win their last home game, so they'll probably beat Athletic. Athletic, I mean, Athletic, they should have wrapped up not just seven; they should have wrapped up Europa League football long ago, but they messed up. Uh, you know, Uncle Ernie. At the Bernabeu, hey, we've seen it before. You could do it again, so sure. that would be too bad. But they need a masterclass to um, win there. So I think this, if I'm a betting man, I'm going for Osasuna because they are at home against Girona. They can 
and they are in pole position. If they win, it doesn't matter what anyone else does. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's true. If, and I'll, I'll, I'll be happy. And if if it wasn't, if I'm not picking us as soon as Okay, if I'm not picking Osasuna, it means I'd have to pick Girona because two of yeah. them, their fates are tied to each other. Yeah. But you could, I guess Rio is also a very good pick because I can see them winning the Rio's last game and getting into Europe too. Yeah, but so, would, that, would that be like a, almost like a waste for them because the manager who was master, was the mastermind of this break? And like, and and the issue is going to, they're, they're going to give the job to one of the bones we've seen before, like um, this. <laughs> Vicente Mourinho or something. Nah, like, like to or be even worse, they, Pablo Machin. Yeah, to be fair to right, they've always had like very innovative managers. Like they had Michel before, and now you had Ariola. So, um, it's, it it would just be it would just be I feel a risk for them to go into Europe with a new manager to start the season playing uh, playoffs in Norway or 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 Georgia or something and. And not having a great season, so no, true. They have to do. You have to do players of conference league. Yeah, so I'll rather Ryo not qualify. But if I'm a betting man, I um, I agree with you. I'll go with Osasuna because I think they deserve it. And secondly, I think at home, it's it's gonna be tough. It's a safe. It's a, it's a safe bet for them. Yeah. Yeah, it is a safe bet. And now but let's talk about. Oh, sorry. I guess the winner will come from that game. Yeah. I think that that's definitely the safest bet to go with. Yeah, and that's the game to watch for match day thirty eight and the yeah. early fixtures. Yeah. And let's talk about the big two. It's it's not often that we keep them so late in this program. Wait, let's talk about Real Madrid first. What are we doing? <laughs> oh, come on. Okay. okay, so we'll talk about Real Madrid first. Yes. Um, <laughs> Real Madrid won at the Sanchez Pijuan against Sevilla, and Sevilla they had they really had nothing to play for in this game, or they had something to play for, but their minds were a bit more focused on the Europa League final. Yeah, I I remember seeing a post yesterday where some of like Sevilla can't qualify for Europe through the league again, and I was like, okay, I guess that's because. Osasuna can win this weekend. Girona can win this weekend. Athletic Club can win, and None of them won. <laughs> In fact, yeah, yeah. all of them lost. So, Sevilla can qualify for the conference league. But for me, right? Yeah. I don't want them to because if they win the Europa League and qualify for the Champions League, why should they try and win? It won't, That's it will be a stupid... It will be the most stupid... It will honestly make me angry. Because yeah. <laughs> it well, makes no sense. Like, you... I know I'm not advocating for it, like, but just don't take the game seriously if you win the Europa League, you know? Yeah. <laughs> now, if you don't win the Europa League, of course, go for it yeah. against Real Sociedad. I think yeah. if Sevilla are in that position, they can actually win that game. Yeah, yeah, they can. And the thing is, we mentioned that the, the game winner or the conference league position will come from the Osasuna Girona game. But if mm-hmm. Osasuna and Girona tie and Sevilla wins, they're going to be seven. Yeah, same thing with Rayo. You chance about seven. Same thing with Rayo. You're right. Mm-hmm. So Sevilla, it's sort of like it's not in their hands, but if they lose the Europa League and they win, then there's a good chance they might be in Europe again next season. So we'll just mm-hmm. have to see what happens. For Real Madrid, Rodrigo scored two two really good goals. The first one from a free kick, and mm-hmm. the second one with good piece of skill. The yeah, they're. I guess they're finishing the season strong, which is a good thing from their perspective. Yeah, I mean, it's not it's slight consolation, but I guess you people complain more if they didn't win, so why not win, you know? Yeah, and you get more money for finishing second, bragging rights. So you know, sure. yeah, so I guess and plus. It's not. It's not. There's any off-field distractions against Sevilla, so they could focus on their game, and they deserve the win. Yeah, yeah, they did. And finally, to Barcelona, since you wanted to speak about Real Madrid first. The champions. <laughs> no. So the good news, I guess, the good news from Barcelona outside of Spain is that their favorite team won won their domestic league, so they're not going to play each other in the Champions League. <laughs> Uh, but on a serious note, Barcelona, they said goodbye to uh, Camp Nou for now. Alba announced that he was leaving Barcelona at the end of the season. And 
he got a nice send off. Then Sergio Busquets as well. It, beautiful things all around. The good feelings from Barcelona. Sepati got a double. Um, Gavi scored, but Balde got a, he got substituted after that tackle by Amath and. I'm not going to red card for that. So, but besides that bow, the injury, it seems like things are, it's fun times at Barcelona right now. Yeah. It was really, I mean, it was really emotional being like, <laughs> when Alba was coming up, he was just crying. I, I was like, I cried too. <laughs> I'm like, damn. We're really going to miss the guy. Like, all those, his link up play, he's like, I think if you say Alba is the best attacking left back of his generation, no one is going to disagree with you. Because he's been that good, I think his main rival for that thing would probably be Marcelo. But yeah, I think Alba's had more longevity, and you know, even this season where he was pushed to the sidelines, he still came up with really important goals and contributions. So yeah, we'll miss him. And Busquets, yeah. what can you say? He didn't even cry; like he's that composed. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it's 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 it is beautiful. And what do you think about the fact that Barca won't be at Camp Nou next season? Yeah, it's kind of. I mean, I like that we're actually not moving locations because, like, you don't you don't have to just get rid of all your history like that and have Camp Nou in a few years be a parking lot or something like that's just that does that, yeah. doesn't seem right <laughs> to a lot of people. Like much price. And, yeah. I mean, the Metropolitan is a beautiful stadium, but it doesn't have yeah. any. Like, there was a feeling, when, even looking at the Calderon from the TV, there was that feeling it gave you. You don't really get that these days. Yeah. But, but um, I feel like, um, yes, it's going to be a lot of money to get Camp Nou renovated the way they wanted, but ultimately, I think it will be worth it because if you're looking at Spain, um, hosting the 2030 World Cup, you know, and right now company doesn't meet the specifications for it, which is weird. If you, like, hear it the first time, but when you investigate, you'll be like, okay, this stadium needs a lot of work done. Yeah, yeah it's really like, does. It's, it's going to mm-hmm. be a 1.5 billion euro job. Mm-hmm. I actually thought it'd be more, but <laughs> yeah, I guess maybe, net, I think we're only staying at the Olympic Stadium for a season, right? Yeah, for a season. Yeah, I think November 2024, Barca might be back at the Camp Nou if things go according to plan. But as we all know in this world, things can always yeah, things, go things are never that simple. Yeah. Yeah, but... Yeah, we're yeah, really, really good day. Yeah, it's been a very good day. And yeah, so I'm going to eat some humble pie. Last week... I stuck my neck out and I said, Borussia Dortmund. <laughs> okay, let me know that Fana is going to listen. Sorry, Fana. I'm in the bonus <laughs> yeah. I, mean, I, I, I warned you, didn't I? <laughs> you did, you did. I mean, the stars, like, it, the stars uh, it was to too good. good to be true, like, Every team was set up for them, and yeah, it was like eleven <laughs> years since they last won. Marco Royce had never won the Bundesliga. Who wears number eleven? Marco Royce. I was so excited. <laughs> I didn't even really think about those ones. Yeah, I, I thought about those ones, and I sent it for him. But, but you know, you know the, the, the worst part about all this. I feel like Cone scoring that goal was completely unnecessary because. It gave, like, I saw the reaction of Dortmund fans when the head Bayern were drawing. I'm like, I just felt bad because I knew what was coming a few moments later. Yeah. yeah, but honestly, given the fact that Mainz lost four of their last games before the Dortmund game, I just wonder <laughs> what, <laughs> why did they have that motivation to stop Dortmund winning at all costs? I can understand Cohen, right? Because you don't want Bayern to win it in your stadium and Mm-hmm. It's on some title your stadium. I can stand that from that perspective. But mind you're not playing for anything. You're safe. You can't go up. You can't. You, there's there's nothing to play for. And they defended for their lives. They defended like their lives were reliant on that point or a stop in Dortmund with the men they stayed in the Bundesliga, which is which is crazy. But you have to give credit to them for professionalism. But at the same time, like come on, 
give the world what yeah. they need. Some people are thinking, if so, I, I, I guess some people be like, but don't you want a different league champion? But if you think about it, like, it's not really their business who's the league champion, not there. They have their own objectives and whatnot. So, and, and there's professional pride mm-hmm. in that case. Yeah. That's and, a shame, but, man. No, it was a shame. It was a shame. I, I, I was like the first for hours after that. It's I, I didn't I didn't expect it to be Wait. Like that. Okay. I thought I in my mind I even kept thinking Dortmund drew the game lost the game, but they actually drew the yeah, game. Yeah, they, they tied, yeah, they tied. Yeah, because I, I think I think I was watching the Bayern game after I had Bayern equal had them been pegged back because I was like, okay, this is what we decide the league now. Because Dortmund yeah. were not on it at all. Like the usual speed in their play was not there. And yeah. you know, unfortunately for them, Rice wasn't fully fit. Bellingham couldn't even come out at all. That's t- yeah, yeah. and Halle had a nightmare of the game. Like with the yeah, he missed some and, chances. Yeah, the- oh he even missed the pen yeah, there is no like uh, like and just right before the second goal, that's when he missed. It. I mean, I I don't I don't laugh, but it's a little bit funny. Yeah, it's, <laughs> like, every, it's every, just like uh, that, that that law happened to Dortmund. Everything that could go wrong went wrong for them, which is a tragedy. But um, the good news in the Bundesliga is that Union Berlin are going to be in the Champions League, which is which to me is interesting, given the fact that this is a club that was saved by their fans they come to the bundesliga they go to conference league then the europa league and now they're going to be in the champions league it's like playing career mode almost yeah and yeah hopefully if we're getting a german team we at least we're not getting Bayern. so anyone else is fine. <laughs> yeah everyone else is fine uh moving on to italy uh it was decided the champions league place is already decided there is, it's going to be Napoli, of course, and who are first, Lazio, Inter Milan, and AC Milan. Uh, AC Milan, the Unless. Players. Unless Juventus get their 10 points back. So, <laughs> that's the big caveat. And see, this is just weird. Like, why, why take away the points in the first place just to give them back in lesser form? It's, it's yeah. just weird, man. Like, I don't know how AC Milan will feel. If you will get, I it, it, this can only end up in a bloody mess. <laughs> yeah, like like because there'll be, it, there'll be lawsuits everywhere. You know. Yeah. Yeah, and if if you were at beaten Milan today, it could have been tighter. But I I think that like hearing about that points deductions like minutes before their game on Monday did a lot of damage to them, and maybe and it's carried over up until now. So like um. Commiserations for Juve, but congrats to Milan and to Inter, who will get to be in the Champions League for another season again. And yeah, so it. all we need is for Inter to win the Champions League so we don't play against them again, because I'm tired <laughs> of playing against the same teams all the time. Yeah, Real Madrid too would be tired of playing against Premiership clubs. And in the, honestly, yeah. Yeah, I feel for them in that sense, like, let them play against someone else. Yeah. Like in in Premier League, it's Man City, Arsenal, Manchester United, and Newcastle who will be in the Champions League for next season. Uh, Rayo won't be able to play Liverpool because they'll be in the Europa League, but they might get to play United Emery because Aston Villa will be in the could be in, will be in the Conference League. Mm-hmm. And in League uh, PSG, did a, they did what they do in that league? If they won it, and Lance are going to be in the Champions League. That's weird. Yeah, yeah. And Marseille, they're possibly going to be there, but they have to go through the qualifiers. There's been a lot of talk that the Champions League is losing va- will lose value next season because I although I do think it might be like a weaker field, but like people are saying it's not the Champions League if you have Newcastle, Union Berlin, Real Sociedad, Lens. No. Um, what do you say to that? Those people need to get a lot because Newcastle before some millionaires used to come in Newcastle were actually a very good team. So I don't know what yeah. you're saying. Like yeah. these people are just I'm not even getting to them now. <laughs> I'll say I'll say things that will get us demonetized, but sure. it's like if people that have this logic, you might as well want the Super League to happen instead of acting righteous. We don't want a Super League because it's the same stupid mentality of the Super League. You know? Yeah. 
Yeah, it really is. And just to wrap it up with our European football roundup, Ben Pika also won the Portuguese league. And I would tell anyone to look at scenes from Ben Pika's Instagram because the scenes there, it's crazy. And there are a lot of people who say, there's some music coming to my apartment right now from outside, but a lot of people say the league has lost value in terms of like teams don't really want it. But when I look at the way Benfica celebrates a league title, even though they've won it 38 times and it's all over the streets, I think that point is a bit of BS. Yeah, it's really stupid. Yeah. And speaking of celebrations, to come back, to wrap it back to Spain, there's some good news for Granada, who are back in La Liga, as well as Las Palmas, the POPO are back. And they're coming back with some familiar faces with Jonathan Vieira, with Sandra Ramirez, with Vitolo, Las Palmas. And for Granada, Paco Lopez is back. And Callejon is back. Yeah, really nice to see some of these players back. And, you know, congratulations to Granada and Las Palmas. Especially Las Palmas. Like, after the hearts break of playoffs last year, I'm like, yeah. you know, when, when you lose a playoff, you have to crossroads. Either you get better or you just sink in the mire. Like, what happened to Depro? So, you know, congrats to Las Palmas. Yeah, and in the other uh, playoff positions, it's Levante, Deportivo Alaves, Eibar, and Albacete. So it's going to be Levante versus Albacete, uh, Deportivo versus Eibar, and we know with the history of these playoffs, like the sixth team usually qualifies or mm-hmm. comes to La Liga. So I feel sorry for Levante, but <laughs> I, I think Albacete might be the ones to win it. <laughs> you know, Albacete versus Messi in his last season at Barcelona next season would be nice. <laughs> nice. Or <laughs> Eibar not... coming up. <laughs> oh, no, the allegations. Hey, 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 man. <laughs> <laughs> The allegations are going to be crazy. <laughs> uh, uh, anyway, anyway, anyway. Yeah, I mean, any of these things coming up would be nice. Yeah, it would be I nice. Mean, uh, I don't really want Alaves to come, come back. I mean, I, I guess they're, I, I mean, I don't think they're a terrorist team anymore, so. No, it's just that I remember. Who's, who's, who's their coach now? Luis Garcia Plaza. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, 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 the one theory. Let, let's look at Eibar. Eibar will be interesting. And it will be like since the Premier League. John Bautista plays for Eibar. Hold on, how many goals does he have this season? Six. <laughs> okay. Um, guys, got Garitano? No, no, no. no. <laughs> <laughs> okay, um, let's look at the one Who's their coach, man? I mean, okay, the yeah, the coach. Oh yeah. oh yeah, okay, yes. Yeah. Oh, and, and, them and, or Albas Albas let me see their coaches. I'm sure I don't yeah. know, but I'm just Ruben Alves. Who are you? Yeah, he's um, he's linked to Rayo actually. But if you look at if you look at young. their stats, yeah, he's young and if you look at their stats, they're the ones that have produced possibly they scored the most goals in the Segunda. And they've also conceded the most goals in the uh, out of the top seven in the Segunda. By all means let them get promoted. <laughs> I mean, for one team, like yeah. it's it's going to really freshen up the really, because we haven't seen our set team in like what in how many yeah. years? So. Yeah, I feel having like Las Palmas and Albacete, who we haven't seen in quite a while, is going to be very good. If we have Levante mm-hmm. back, although I do want them back for the Valencian Derby, but it's going to be like the same old team, so it'll be nice to have like some freshness. And so, yeah, I'll love to see Albacete to join Las Palmas and Granada, but like congrats to Granada and to Las Palmas. And the scenes for Granada celebration was absolutely beautiful. So I'm, I'm happy to have them back. I'm happy yeah. to have Marco Lopez back as well. Even for Albacete, like this, yeah. they got promoted this season, like the season before, and they're like on their way to the Primera, hopefully from their point of view, so it'll be a really fascinating story. Yeah, it'll be really fascinating. And sadly, and, and whenever I look at Segunda, I have to remind myself that. Malaga are not going to be in second division next season. They're going to be playing in Primera Ref. And as you know, with Depor, it's, it's going to... It's yeah, De- Depor, Depor and... Yeah. I mean, Depor are in the players, but I, without players and just the terrible away record, I don't know. I think no Depor fans are expecting them to get to the second deck. If they do, it would be a nice surprise. But... Sure. I mean, yeah, that, away, uh, that away form is just crazy. Like, how can you not win a single away game in a year? 
Oh well. <laughs> you know, you can ask Maria about that. <laughs> At least they won one. Yeah, sure. I'm yeah. sure they won the they lost their Copa the very first like like first round game, right? Yeah, 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 they did. They did. I'm very away from them. Actually, speaking of um, the third division playoffs, this, we're going to have a mini classical in the third division playoffs too. Barca versus Real Madrid, Barca B versus Real Madrid B. So that's going to be interesting for those who like to watch kids play. <laughs> you don't phrase it like that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, wait, could, that, could we play against the third? I'm looking at second left for the show. Yeah, I mean, we beat teams. I don't know, like, yeah, like one is too many. <laughs> one, 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 one in the second that with Villarreal, this staying up is just too many. Yeah. yeah. But anyways, um, with all that discussed. It's time to end the podcast. I hope you've enjoyed our this podcast edition. We didn't speak too much about the big boys because the relegation battle is very caliente in La Liga. And hopefully you'll be here with us next week when we see who's going down. And hopefully, for, for my sake, it's not Valencia. But adios. Adios. <laughs>